Hey, hey, it's W5HRO. Sorry for the delay. It's been about a week since I did the last video on this. I told you I'd have this thing probably on the air and have it all done. I'd do another video. Well, I'm having the same problem as before. It wasn't what I thought it was. It's good to beef all that stuff up. Now I know it's going to be reliable, but still. Uh, for some reason, I never, when I, well, what happened is, when I, last video I did, I had this thing turned upside down, remember? So I turned over, like I said I was going to do, I put this thing on, but I went to pull the tube out before I did all this, and I went to look, uh-oh, look at that, that got poof, that clamp tube got turned on, something happened. So, like I said, I changed tubes. And after I did all this, took it in there because I thought everything was going to be done, you know, and uh, loaded everything up on the RF side, the plate current, you know, well, it's cathode current anyway. Cathode current came up, screen current 30 mils after I had 12 mils of grid drive. Went to modulate, the plate current was dropping way back like, you know, 250 or 225 mils. I'm like, the screen, screen current was coming up about 10 mils higher than it was supposed to. I'm like, what the heck? which didn't really make any sense, but anyway, and I like, well, what the heck's going on? And I kept testing, and I noticed my modulator power kept getting weaker and weaker and weaker, and then all of a sudden, flash, same thing again. So I, I blew the fuse, so I changed the fuse, tested it a couple more times, a couple more flashes, and here's that 1625 that I put in there, you know, the second time around when I took, like I said, when I took it back in there to check it after I installed this. Poof, this one's black. So here's the circuit. It's, it's out of the T368 exciter. When you have RF grid drive, it comes down here, goes into the grid of 1625, pulls the tube down into cutoff. So this thing's not putting any load on the screen line, the screen voltage line. This, I'm tapping, I'm powering my screen up from the uh, cold end of the modulation transformer where the B plus connects to it, the high V connects to the modulator secondary. On that end of it, goes through the screen dropping resistors, goes up here, I have some regulators to keep the voltage more stable. I made it to where the actual regulation spot's a little above 500 volts, so I can get them a little dimmer. Then when I modulate, they drop down, but it helps stabilize, it helps regulate the voltage better. It, you know, it just keeps the impedance more stable and so forth. So anyway, but one thing I quickly figured out, and the th part that I left out, the first thing I noticed was when I turned this thing over after I did that last video and I put this cap on here and I plugged in the new 1625, I plugged it in, turned the power on. I'm like, why in the heck is that 1625 so bright? And I immediately turned off the, uh, the switch. And remember I told you I changed out that transformer? for that filament of that thing, it completely dawned on me. I don't know what I was thinking. I guess, well, I kind of know, at the time that I did the modification when I lived in San Jose on this, I uh, I was doing a lot of DC supplies, right? I was doing a lot of DC supplies. And uh, and I was thinking, okay, you got a, you know, you got a, a 24 volt center tap transformer, you ground the center tap, well, you got a 12 volt supply, right? Wait a minute, this is AC. Why in the world I never grounded? This is a 606. This is a 12 volt center tap. But it's AC. We're talking about AC. It doesn't matter if I ground the center tap. I had this thing cut loose and I had one of those little, little, uh, what do you call it, little insulators on the end of the wire. It wouldn't matter if I grounded the wire or not. It was still going to be 12.6 volts on the tube. It's just, it's just better. It's easier on the transformer if that wire's grounded. So I don't know what I was thinking. I had that break. So I first. So of course, I luckily I still had what this. This was the one that I originally had pulled out of here. Luckily, I had a brand new one still in the, uh, the package from Radio Shack. Before all the stores closed down, they were selling this stuff dirt cheap. And I, I left. I went one of the stores in Milpitas, California, for before they shut it down, like about a week before. I loaded up boxes. I went in because this stuff they were selling this stuff for like twenty five percent of the cost. And I thought, hey man, you know, I couldn't or or twenty five percent of the original sale price. So I bought a ton of stuff. And the guy even gave me a he gave me a discount in the end overall to give me a little bit. Give it to me a little bit cheaper, too. So I bought boxes of that stuff. And I've used a ton of it. I don't have much more of it left. But not to digress like I always do, right? 
So I, I had a new one, so I put that back in the same spot that it was. So needless to say, I know this, the problem wasn't with this choke, so I'm going to put this choke back in line just because I don't want any excess capacitance hanging off of this this you know parallel with this one cap here and i i figured if i have that choke in there that's going to give it the isolation that i want to kind of prevent that excess capacitance that'll help so i'm going to leave that on there because i don't want i don't want that voltage on that screen the peak to peak voltage way too high because all this stuff is is increase this thing dramatically which it won't it's not going to increase it that far 1625 plate to the cathode is like so it gets grounded so it's like what seven picofarad but since you've got the screen in parallel with it so what that's probably what less than 20 picofarads and this is 500 puff that i reduced it down to so i wonder if reducing down that cap made it worse i don't know probably not because it was still doing that flash but now i know where the flash was coming from so Basically, what's happening is when I'm modulating, something's making, something's turning this thing on to where it's pulling the screen down, and I think that's what my problem is. So that's that that would also kill the modulation too, because it's it's actually because that B plus line on the other, even though you're going through resistors, there's only like around 20 to 30 some k of resistance there. I think it's somewhere. I think it's like 27k. I'd have to measure it to remember for sure. So it's not really that much, and it's going to short down. the. That's what's killing the fuse, because what happens is it's killing the fuse on the on, on the plate supply. It's killing the fuse that only goes to my the plate transformer primary that goes to this plate transformer that goes to that tube. The modulator side is secondary. So I think what's happening is when I modulate, somehow maybe I'm losing, maybe when I modulate, it's disrupting the exciter rack too, and that's what's happening, and I'm losing grid drive, and that's why this is happening, and it's when I'm, those peak modulation peaks, everything is so excessive that this is why this is happening, but at least I've narrowed, I'm, I mean, I'm getting everything narrowed down, the other thing is, these caps here, this is my RF plate choke, right, well, I got, I used the, the, those good engineering practices you find in all the handbooks where they said, like, divide the cap, the plate choke bypass cap in half, put, put one of them on one side of the chassis and one of them on the other side. So I took that, those general, those practices, those good, uh, those good construction practices, and I did that. But these were brand new Vachets. They were 30 kV. I'm wondering what the, what the RF, you know, if, if the RF current was a problem, I'd want to parallel a couple of them together. If it's the AC peak voltage, I could series a couple of them, you know. But I'm wondering if maybe could, with the RF excess current that's getting bypassed on this, with that high AC, though, that massive AC peak voltage coming from that 200% modulator, maybe these things are breaking down, and that could be the problem too, but I don't know. But I think I think it's I think my exciter something's killing my exciter and that's why I'm losing grid drive and I think that's what's happening. So I'm going to turn this thing over and I'm going to reinstall this choke first and uh, I'm going to put uh, the well, right now first before I do that I'm going to put the caps across the meters first like I was I keep forgetting to do I'm going to do that next then I'm going to go ahead and. Uh, put a new 1625 in here, put the plate cap back on, turn the whole thing over, and then I'm going to, uh, I may go ahead temporarily and put a resistor in here just to keep keep this from happening. I think I only have two 1625s left, so that's an issue. But I'm going to, when I get, after I get that done, I'm going to turn this thing over, and uh, I'm going to go through and uh, see if I can, uh, I'm going to put that choke back in, and See if I can't look everything else over. I think everything else is fine. And I think having this extra, this was 180 ohms when it was in series. I think the way I had everything set in these values of resistors, I think it was working best when I had this thing in line. So I'm going I'm to put it back now that I know it wasn't the problem. So anyway, so that's all for now. I just kind of want to give you an update. And uh, I... Uh, I'm going to slide out the exciter rack, too, when I do all that before I try it again. And I'm going to see if I can't bypass. I don't think I have any bypass caps on that AC line. So, like I said, I'll probably add a couple .001 caps there on that AC line. 
but I think that's what's happening. I think I'm losing RF grid drive and that clamp tube is clamping and it's just, it's with that peak modulation. And well, what's happening is when it's clamping, it's popping my fuse on that panel. That's what's happening. It's popping the fuse. So, you know, I, <laughs> I got to prevent the other thing that what, let me go inside real quick. One last thing and I'll show you. Let me just do this now tie this video up here i was going to make this thing go on so long but uh this will be uh and i'll just end the video here oh golly but the reason i got busy last week is because i had to inst the cat tore these blinds down i had to put new blinds up and then i went to raise and lower the ones upstairs and the sun had rotted the strings after a number of years and they broke so i was upstairs this week in my spare time putting installing new blinds in the windows so anyway but uh, here's the fuse that it blows and that's the only thing this fuse goes to is the primary winding of the plate transformer on the rf side this one here goes to the uh the modulator primary and this this one here because remember originally i told you i had the y the, the v or whatever the y because i had the, th the 220 on this you know i had like that was the uh red black and the white or the, yeah red black and the white that i had the green ground wire of course but i really like because i did this years ago when i built this transmitter i had the idea i thought well, I'll, I'll probably never do cw again but i thought it'd be good to have a way to turn off the modulator side, you know, if I went to use this thing on CW and I could short across the, you know, I just, I just have the modulator turned off. That's all I would really need to do, just shut it off. And I could just do CW on there. So that's kind of what I did. I, what I never thought about is, is what happens. I did, I thought, well, maybe someday I'd figure out a fail-safe mechanism to prevent it from ever happening. But that's the problem. I'm modulating away. I lose plate voltage to my RF deck, but the modulator still got plate voltage, and I'm see that's the problem. I really need it to kill everything when it happens, so that so there's no modulator power when there's no plate voltage on that tube. That's the other thing, and I'm trying to think. Well, I could wire these two sockets maybe in parallel and divide the. Uh, Divide the fuses in half instead of using 15, what, put like seven and a half, you know, amp resistors. I mean, resistors, fuses or something or something close. It would be somewhere close to 15 amps, something like that, you know. But I really should have it kill both sides. And that's, I really need to do that. So I'm going to look at that too. I think I need to jumper these two across because that's, you know, that way, like I said, I, I originally designed this stuff with other things in mind, future things that I may or may not use, and I, I didn't want to not do it in case I ever decided I wanted to do it, you know? So I put it there with the, you know, with the possibility of future use, like I did a lot of things on this transmitter. So anyway, that's kind of the story, but I'm still, still plugging away at this, but I think this is what's getting what, this is what's getting killed. The, the the power it's something's happening where this is getting killed and when that happens that clamp tube goes and it's like and then that's what's happening so maybe a, a big series resistor in series with that 1625 tube maybe to help it a little bit so it's not so massively you know catastrophic on it but that tube's there to protect the 4-400 1625s are cheap I can get those things are still those things. I can get a bunch of them, new old stock, a dime a dozen. Those things are nothing because there's so many of them available. So anyway, that's all for now, and uh, I'll go and I'll upload this video. It's just less than 15 minutes, so this one isn't too bad. And uh, I'm gonna plug away, and w when I get this thing working again, I'll do another video and say, here, it's finally back, and this is what I found, and this is what I had to do to get all that that issue resolved for so this thing my plan is i want this thing this thing will do about 3200 watts peak envelope power because the carrier power say it's at 400 watts which i'm going to run it lower that but say it's at 400 watts when i modulate the carrier power raises up to like 800 so the peak to peak power is like what 3200 did i do that right so 800 watts times four is that 3200 i think it is right <laughs> if my math in my head's correct 
anyway, so that's kind of the deal. But my plan is, is that when I get the, the AVC control, all the modulator completely modified and the speech amp redone, get all that finished, I'm going to regulate it back to where the thing just stays at 1500 watts the whole time I'm talking. I'm going to have the audio compression and everything. It's, that meter is just going to sit there at 1500 watts with every breath. But I'm going to make it to where it won't go past it. And since the transmitter will do 3,200 watts, running it at 1,500 watts PEP only, well, this thing should run 24-7 without anything going bad, right? You would think. So that's sort of my plan. Overbuild, regulated back. This thing is like continuous, 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 continuous duty. I could cheat out, go on vacation for a month, come back, and it still should be putting out full power, right? So that's all I have for now, and I went over the 15-minute mark. Sorry about that. 73s. This is W5HRO.